Welcome to an introduction to accounting, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. In this podcast we are going to continue our look at bookkeeping and deal briefly with the idea of double entry for transactions. There are a number of common types of transaction, in other words they will be the same for nearly all businesses, but you will find that there are some differences, which we won't go into in this podcast, between sole traders, partnerships and limited companies. So let's get straight on with it. What's common for nearly all businesses? If we have a cash purchase, which is treated as an expense, there will be two entries, obviously. We will debit an account, we will credit an account. We debit the purchaser's account, because that's the expense, and we credit the bank account, because that's where the monies come from. So it's debit purchases, credit bank. However, if we have a cash purchase treated as inventory, then instead of debiting a purchase account, we will debit an inventory account. So the cash purchase for inventory, debit inventory, credit bank. Suppose we make a cash sale. We sell goods for £800 cash. Obviously we're getting cash into the bank. So it's debit bank and credit the sales account. We have the cash payment of an expense, so we pay a telephone bill. We will debit the expense account, so debit the telephone expense and credit the bank account. Right, the asset of cash in the bank has of course decreased. We have the credit purchase for inventory. We debit the inventory because we're now regarding what we purchase as an asset and we credit the trade payables because we owe the money for the goods. If we have a credit sale, goods sold on credit for £4,000, we will debit trade receivables because that is the money we are owed and we will credit sales in the normal way. If we have a purchase return, in other words if we've bought goods on credit but we then find that we have to return some or all to the supplier, we will debit the trade payables account because it's going to reduce the amount we owe and we will credit the purchaser's returns account. Same idea with a sales return. If we have goods sold on credit and the customer returns them for a good reason, we will debit the sales returns account. We will credit the trade receivables account. Crediting the trade receivables means, of course, that we are owed a little less. Now, if we make a payment to a purchaser after we bought goods on credit, we are reducing the amount we owe. So our trade payables account will be debited, right? debits to a liabilities account, reduce it, and we credit the bank account. We've less money in the bank after we've paid the bill. If we receive payment from a customer who bought goods on credit, payment of 1200 received from a debtor, we'll debit the bank account, because obviously we've got the money in the bank now, and we credit the trade receivables which reduces the amount that we are owed. If we arrange a bank loan we will debit the bank account because we will increase the asset of bank with the money that we've received for the loan and we will credit the loan account which is a liability. Now if we make a payment on a bank loan here we've got three accounts involved. If we make a repayment of 1200 so much of it represents a repayment of the principal and the remainder represents interest paid on the loan. So just for an example we'll assume that we pay 1200 and a thousand of it is principal, 200 of it is interest. So we'll debit the loan account with a thousand, in other words we've reduced the amount we owe by a thousand. We debit the interest expense account because that's really what it's cost us, that's our expense in having that loan over that period. And we will credit the bank account because we've paid the money out of the bank. That ends our brief port podcast on common transactions brought to you by Parkbench Tutors narrated by David Hopcroft. Thank you for watching and for listening. We wish you luck in your studies. Remember, you can find us on Facebook, Parkbench Tutors, or you can look us up on the internet, parkbenchtutors.com.